All right, guys. Welcome back. Philly Escape Pod, episode 20. Kind of a milestone episode. Uh, 20 episodes is a lot of episodes. It is a lot. That's what I was going to say, actually. It's a, it's, that's a lot of episodes. We've been kind of banging them out. Uh, there was some, uh, you know, hiccups in the way where we uh, had not as much as we wanted to release, but... We just took a little summer break, you know, we're back, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's fine. Uh, you also might notice that we're a couple men down. A couple men yeah. down. Yeah, oh, <laughs> God. Uh, you know, <laughs> flay has been busy lately. You haven't seen him in a while, but, uh, you know, I'm sure he'll be back. He'll be back, he'll be back. He'll be back, he'll be back. And uh, Caputi's busy this week. Uh, he had a couple nights uh, this week where he had stuff to do, so... We figured we had to he get had it Dungeons out. Dungeons and Dragons last night, and he has yeah, yeah, yeah. a little ultimate frisbee tonight, so he can't be here. Feel free to post uh, so your, record... feel free to post your uh, thoughts on that in the comments. By the way, I won't. Yeah, I won't, come, I won't judge. Little, but... give... I won't judge, but just post your thoughts. You know. <laughs> yeah, give a look, give a little rest. Give a little rest in the comments. They deserve it. It's fine. Um, but yeah, you know, <laughs> they'll be back. We'll pick up the slack where they're leaving it. You know. Yeah. We're, it's a two man pod this week, and it, I don't know. I think, quite frankly, I think we're gonna we're gonna blow your guys' minds. Is two men better than three? Probably not, but we're going to make you think it is. I mean, we're going to kill it. It's fine. Uh, you're going to have to deal with it, you know? This is what you get. It is what it is. Uh, <laughs> we, we're all you got. We're all you got this week, all right? So just deal with it, all right? We're all, we're all you got. We're all you need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so exactly. we're going to, yeah, we're going to, we're going to get into um, the Sixers, the last couple games recap, and then um, also uh, the Raiders-Eagles game, which was an absolute shit show, in my opinion. Uh, everybody was here for the game. For me, uh, we were actually at my house watching the game, block party style, outside. Everybody had the TVs rolling. Um, the boys, big, were, big the, Eagles party. The, the the boys were buzzing for the first four minutes, and then they kind of got shut down after the Raiders scored like twenty five hundred unanswered points. Well, but uh, so, so disappointing because the brews were out, the wings oh, yeah. were there. I had a meatball sandwich in my hand. Oh, yeah. We were scoring points. Oh, yeah. Next thing I know, I ate too many pretzels. My mouth is covered in salt. I don't know what to do. I'm looking around for water. The Raiders have scored 20 points on us. We're not doing anything. It, was, it, went, it went downhill <laughs> it was like so fast. Dream, it, it went downhill so fast. But At one point, I stole, I stole that guy's seat. And then I got, I don't know. And then <laughs> later on in the party, I just started having a panic attack, thinking he was going to kill me because I stole his seat. Yeah, you was, know, like uh, there was... It was bad emotions. Bad yeah. emotions in the Raiders game. <laughs> I was, was a family friend. I was in no bad, danger. Bad vibes all around. Bad vibes all around. Bad vibes. For, for start of it. But most of it was fine. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to get into these Sixers games. Um, last two games, basically, because, uh, you know, it's been, what? Uh, since the last time week? since the last time we talked about the Sixers, they have lost two games and won two games. They were 1-0 uh, when we last talked about them. Right. They almost beat the Nets. They, at the end of the game, just blew it. You know what I mean? That was sad to see. Yeah, I mean, the Nets are a good team, obviously. I thought we would win that game just because it's like an early part of the uh, of the year. I feel like we play like like we're mo- like we're a kind of team that like likes to play hard from like get like the get go, and the Nets are like just not that kind of team. So I thought well, like- was like not only not only that we were coming off of the big game one. They had lost their first game against the Bucks, and we yeah. had we had won, and we were all hype off of it. They were having fun. They and then they came out, and they were they had the lead for what was like I think until the last five minutes of the game. Where after that point, I think they scored one basket or something, or maybe no- nothing. It was just they went on an absolute dry spell at the end of the game, and it kind of seemed to bring up some glaring holes on the team that we sort of touched on in the first game, but we were just so happy about, you know, their victory that we didn't even want to focus on them. You know what I mean? Well, I think I mean, realistically, I'm pretty sure they were blowing us out at one point, and because I'm pretty sure they outscored us by like ten in the fourth. So, well, mean, that's what it. Well, that's what it was. It was like we were up for the whole game, and then our after the last five minutes, our lead just started shrinking. I, oh, okay. It was, I thought you were saying the other way around. No, 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 no. Okay, we were gotcha. absolutely blowing them out for most of the game. It yeah. just towards the end of the game, we just couldn't score. It just seemed, and Bede was in his spot. It's like it's like he'd throw the ball to Embiid, and then he'd like he'd miss a shot, or like Danny Green was off. It's just the offense just had no rhythm at the end of the game, which has been pretty much I feel like our biggest problem our problem the reason we can't get out yeah. of the second round every year it's been our it's problem for like five game. years it's been just this end of the game last fourth five quarter, minutes dude. can you score it's they can't it's it's almost the entire fourth quarter it seems like it's just like it's just you don't you don't see the same team that you saw for the first three quarters it's just we just play different the, the scheme... well we're such a transition team we're like we're in the flow and then they just lock it down those last five minutes and we can't do anything it's just i don't know how you fix that a lot of people on reddit were saying 
we need Ben Simmons. We just need like that ball handler to, handler to come out there and just give and beat the ball. But I don't know. There's problems with that too because we mean, have was... Embiid, or we have even with Simmons, we had those problems. Yeah, as I'm saying, it's the same. It's really the same issues. Um, I mean, I don't want to go too deep into that just because it's like you know it is the first. It's only the first five games of the season or whatever it is. Yeah, I mean the team needs to gel and everything. We don't have we don't have Simmons yet. We just need to figure out how we're gonna work without him at this point. Yeah, he might come back. I mean, there's been developments in that. It yeah. seems like he will come back potentially. I'm actually not sure what, like it. it right now, it seems like it's all up in the air, whether he's yeah, coming I back mean, or not. But, I think uh, I heard that he's coming back to um the team, to sort of work with a sports psychologist at this point. Oh, before is he? coming back fully, yeah, it's okay. sort of like so I saw he was. Talking I don't about know some if, mental health stuff. Yeah, I don't know if you guys out in the audience are big Ted Lasso fans, but me and Brits have both been watching it. And we're big fans. I think it's I. Is Ben Simmons Jamie Tart? No, I'd rather have it's Jamie so Tart. It's so similar. It's so similar. <laughs> I'd still rather have Jamie Tart. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather have Jamie Tart, but I at feel least like he ben came back and with, Tart. At least he came back with open arms. Yeah, that's true. Jen Simmons came back with the most closed-minded like, mindset of all time. So it's like, I don't know. For those, of, for those in the audience who don't know Jamie Tart, can you explain it for a second? I mean, basically, all-star player. Leading goal scorer, has a horrible attitude, gets kicked off the team, or gets benched and then gets and get, gets kicked off the team for his attitude problems. Uh, ends up leaving, or going to another team, ends up leaving that team, asks to come back, basically says no, eventually comes back to the team, has a whole new mindset, open arms, big team guy, and uh, succeeds everything. Succeeds from there. And then, then just, yeah, just succeeds all the way uh, after that with a new mindset. Ben Simmons hasn't really got that new mindset yet. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just, it, we're still in the development stage yeah. where we need to, like, you know, let him know what's going on. He's got a huge opportunity here that he's kind of blowing. Yeah. But he, he wants to go to a bad team. He doesn't know if he's ever going to have this opportunity again. I think he's just happy with the money, and he just doesn't care where he goes now, and he's just mad at us. That's why I can, To be honest, though, can you blame him? If you were in a situation with hundreds of millions of dollars, I'd want to win. I, mean, I personally, but, I'd want to win, but also I wouldn't mind just chilling back. Yeah, but it's a don't move, you? Though. Yeah, but don't you like show a little bit of loyalty to the team that gave you that money? You know, like, you have to. You like, have I mean, to. We, we're the ones who gave you one hundred and fifty million dollars, like wherever it is, like one hundred eighty, one hundred thirty, whatever it is. Like that's so much money, and we're the ones who gave you that opportunity, gave you the got gave you got you paid earlier than we had to. Also, you know, we didn't have to pay you that early. Just and, to show you yeah, how loyal we were to him. Yeah, them. exactly. And it's just, I don't know. But let's let's, just, uh, just, uh, let's get back into the game recast. I, just, I feel like we could have so much more Ben Simmons talk. Yeah, I mean. And so much speculation now. It's like, it's a little It's just for me, for me, I mean, that, that Nets loss was brutal. Just because it felt like for the first three quarters, we had just won the first game. And we were dominating the Nets, who were like supposed to be the best team in the East, if not for uh, the Bucks, And. It just felt like everything was right. We didn't need Ben Simmons and we were going to, you know, if this was going to be it, like we're, we're going to all come together and just have like a really good season. But then just all of our old problems came back. So it was just, a, it was a little disappointing to see that even with the fresh faces, we can still fall back into the same old rut. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just like we beat, we beat the Pelicans. We should have beat the Pelicans. Obviously. We, um, we, I don't know. I don't know. I think we're beating the teams that we should be, and we're. I don't know. We just beat the. Uh, it's the early. Pistons today. It's early. The, in the season. Yeah. Like, let's just say that. I mean, yeah, we just beat the Pistons. Actually, like, I think the game ended like 15 minutes ago. Yeah. Um, we beat them. Uh, I think we've beaten the. What was it? The Thunder. Who else? No, we lost to the Thunder. Or yeah, we beat the Thunder. No, I don't know what I'm saying. We beat the Thunder pretty bad, and then we lost to the Knicks. It just. Yeah. It seems like the two competitive teams that we've played, we lost to them. Which, I mean, we're obviously going to get the playoffs, but you don't like to see that. Yeah, I mean, it's not a great start. Like, it's not a great omen for the season, I guess, so far. But, I mean, Joel's playing, you know, Joel style. Seth Curry is also hot. Seth Curry is a god. He's hot again. And it's just like, it seems like he's not slowing down since last season where he had a, I think he had a career year last, last year with us, basically. And it just seems like he's well, not yeah, slowing I mean, down. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like, we kind of gave him his first opportunity to really start. And then in the playoffs, um, we sort of shifted to giving him his first opportunity to have like an even bigger role in the starting lineup. 
Yeah. Because he became pretty much our second scoring option at times when, like, Tobias couldn't he do it. He was always, like, a like a starter, and, but he wasn't really, like, a, a go-to guy, you know? It just seems like since we've got him, he's really just taken his game to the next level, and he's which just is, become a... Which is, which is crazy for a guy guy's age, too, because he's an older guy, like, for, like, in the terms of the NBA. You know, he's, like, he's a little he's like older. 31 now, 32. What's absolutely ridiculous is we're paying him $8 million this year and $8 million next yeah, year. Yeah, we got him for an absolute steal. For, for Josh Richardson, steal. dude? Nobody we're wanted playing, Josh we're, Richardson. We're playing, Josh we're, Richardson's not even on the, <laughs> on the maps anymore. We're playing, we're paying Ferk more than that. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's wild. It's actually, the Ferk contract, even though we're paying, the Ferk contract is not bad at all. It's not bad, but it, it, when I think about it, I'm like, that guy's making $15 million a year. He's like a six man. Like, it's to, crazy. You have to understand. Like um, Joe Harris on the on the Nets is making like twenty five million dollars a year, forty million dollars a year, something like that. It's like the if NBA you look, I saw I saw an article where like if you compared the stats of like Ferk to like other players in the NBA, pretty much anybody you compare him with is making at least ten million dollars per year more than he is. So the fact that right. we have him on such a cheap deal for like three years is ridiculous. He could have gotten much more money elsewhere. He just chose to stay here. Interesting. Didn't know that NBA is nuts. NBA is crazy yeah. with money. Well, people love people love threes, dude. If you can hit the, if you can hit those threes, you're gonna get paid. It just seems like it's like so easy to get paid in the NBA. Honestly, you just gotta like show up and like hit a couple hit, hit a couple shots here and there, and you're just like, all right, here's ten mil. Well, it's just so <laughs> tough to be that good at hitting oh, threes. Oh, I mean, you know? yeah, but like you know, it just like seems like in other sports, it's sometimes sometimes it's not as easy to get that that big contract you want. Oh uh, yeah, well I mean if you want money, you should play basketball. I mean basketball, the basketball or baseball. Are ridiculous. Baseball is ridiculous. No no calorie cap or whatever it is. Yeah. Like a weird salary cap. <laughs> but, calorie uh, cap? I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah. Okay, so I mean we lose the Nets. Tough game. Uh you know, we beat the Pel- we beat the Pelicans game one, uh beat the Thunder in game three. Uh, we beat the Thunder by like twenty points too. I think we dominated them. Yeah, it was a 12-point win lead, or 12-point uh, win. Uh, I think we are up by, like, 20 in the fourth, though. Kind of just laid off, like, won the game. Um, don't we beat the Knicks? Or, no, we lose the Knicks. We lost the Knicks. we got to get into that. Because the Knicks are a decent team, I think. The I Knicks mean, were good last year just with Julius Randle. And with the players that they've picked up, they're good. Yeah, no, they're a good team. You know, I mean, adding Kemba to that team? Yeah, they're they're like kind of up on their uh, on their up and up. Like they've been a bad team for years. Um, I mean, they they weren't that bad, weren't they? The fourth seed last year. No, I'm talking about in past. Yeah, I mean, past, oh yeah, yeah, I mean like, like they yeah they were they sort of went through the same journey that we did. I think it just took them a few years longer to get where yeah, they wanted to be. They were kind of in their process, if you will. Um, but the one thing I wanted to take out of that game was Tyrese Maxey had a pretty bad game there. He wasn't. Yeah, really... Tyrese Maxey. He's, is, he's been having a couple good ones here and there, but it seems like when we lose, he's not it's really. His fault. Yeah, he's not really doing what he needs to do. And I know the he's problem, a young guy, but you know, yeah, get, get into that. I just think the problem with Tyrese Maxey is that, you know, he's young. I think what is he like twenty years old, if that, at this point? I think he's yeah, I think he's like twenty one, something like yeah, that. Yeah. So, I mean, he was like eighteen last year. You know what I mean? So like, it's or nineteen, I guess. But Let me look up. It's just ridiculous how like i mean he's he's young i don't know why i was saying it's ridiculous his problem is he 20 he's 20 now he can score good most games but he's not the best facilitator and in our offense especially with where we want to get and beat the ball at the end of the game we need somebody who's like a really good facilitator being our point guard yeah. and he's just he just quite frankly hasn't had the time to develop uh yeah. his game to get to that point because that wasn't his like uh i mean his selling point coming out of college and I think that's what people want Ben Simmons for. There's still the problems with the offense when you add Ben Simmons in. It's just tough. Because we're rolling with Tyrese Maxey right now. And ideally, we should have Tyrese Maxey as our sixth man. You know what I mean? Just a spark off the bench coming in, playing maybe like 25, 30 minutes a game, potentially, if he's playing good. I agree. We that... don't need him as our, as, our, as our point guard. I agree that's the ideal situation. But, like, I think he could develop into something pretty special honestly like like pretty good like i mean maybe not special maybe not all-star caliber but like, i think he can he be couldn't like, be an all-star i mean, I mean he's, he's, he shows potential to fucking pop off yeah he's he's young and he's got like a, a really good mindset it seems like um but realistically dude how many how much time did he even have with mb last year you know think about how much time he had like you're talking about like how we need a guy to get mb the ball and stuff how much time did he really even play with him last year 
In the regular season, yeah, I mean, it was almost not, you know? Like especially because Embiid's usually playing limited minutes anyway. Right. And he was playing on the bench usually. Right. It's so just it's, yeah, I mean it's tough then, to get those like those reps or like if you're just starting to get those reps in to be perfect, you know, like he's not gonna be perfect. But I mean I think it's when he's playing these better teams, uh maybe with like a little bit more defense, it, it's gonna be harder for him. I agree. It's it's unfortunate because I think like you said, Tyrese Maxey could easily develop into an all star in the future. And maybe even this year, if he picks it up, like he's playing good. Um, he's just not at the level we need him to be if we want to win a championship. No, which is, I agree with that. But I think what we're trying to do this year. Season, you know? I mean, we are trying it's, to win yeah, a championship, yeah. obviously, because that's kind of what this team has been for the last three years, really. Um, with the Ben, is the, losing Ben is a big, I mean, as much as I, ever since, I mean, ever since ben we traded. It's, it, I mean, it's it's been a it's like a, it is a setback losing him. It still is a setback because now we need to find the, uh, somebody to fill his role. Is it Tyrese Maxey? It, Do we make a trade? All the, like there's so many questions. I mean, how could it not be a big uh, a big a big loss losing Ben Simmons? I mean, oh, I, yeah. I know we love to hate Ben Simmons, but to be honest, he's the second best player on our team when he's playing. Oh well. yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. I think that's why most like Philly is so mad. It's like not only have you given up on us or and you just had this bad attitude you underperformed we're still our You're second our best, best players, players. <laughs> yeah like yeah. exactly you, you're still our all-star player our defensive like potential uh defensive player of the year like you're still a sick player like i mean i mean we're just, all, all our, our only problem with ben simmons is that like he's really really good already and we just think he could be amazing we and and we just want to see that for him and it's frustrating not to see that and not to see him try as hard as he can because we right. know He's a difference maker, and he can make that impact that's going to get us to the next level. So it's just frustrating to see it. It's like and we're trying also, to give him tough love, and he's like, he's breaking. It's just not working. Yeah, he's also just been a guy that we've kind of – and, that, I mean, bring up the contract again. Like, he's, he's a guy that we we set in stone. Like, you're a part of our team for the next at least five years, you know? Like, maybe the whole yeah. – like, I mean, we, it kind of looked like it was going to be Ben and Joel for 10 years, you know? We're, this is going to be our guys, wanted. you know? Like, we're, and we're going to build around them. Like everybody else is expendable. These are our guys, and now we're it's we're just in a spot where the future is a little bit questionable. It's just it's it's tough because there's bright spots and there's dark spots on the team. You know what I mean? It's like I think Niang's good. I think Niang was a huge pickup. I think Drummond's good. I'm like I'm liking the development in Ferk. I'm liking the development in Isaiah Joe. I'm liking him. I mean, and B. To be honest, we need him. To, we need to rest him. He's clearly hurt, and he's not playing up to his potential because he has a hurt knee. It's the beginning of the season. What the hell are we doing? Rest him so he can be healthy. Come on, it's ridiculous. And then like, yeah, no, I mean, we, Seth Curry's right. getting better. It's, it's. I don't know. It's, it's, we're developing. We're just not as far along as we need to be. Maybe we can get there at the, by the end of the season. I don't know. I, obviously, I think we're still going to be like a top five seed. I just don't. I think I was saying number one last week, and I just don't think that's realistic at this point. No, nah, I mean we're not going to be the number one seed again. I don't. I, I think it's unless unless we make a trade for someone we really like, like I mean, or I, Ben I, comes back and absolutely is driven to win, which I would love to see. I just have highly doubt that happens. If Ben Simmons just comes on the court, runs down the floor the court. and dunks, if he just dunks <laughs> five possessions in a row, immediately all of Philadelphia is like, all right. You're back, dude. dude we love that, you. It's that That's easy, awesome dude. It's that easy. It's I that mean, easy. You, you guys saw. I mean, uh, I think most people. Excuse me. If mo- most people who saw who who follow Philly sports saw what Jason Kelsey said about Ben Simmons, and he said, yeah. "All Even you have to do, all you have to do is play your ass off." Basically, is what he said. And I, I don't have the exact quote, but basically, all you have to do is play. You got to go hard. Yeah. Just- I mean, like, just try, just try your best. And like, literally, and if, if you're if you're such a good player and such a talented player, trying your best for Ben Simmons and and, and like trying to improve, you're gonna be good. He's a freak <laughs> athlete. Like, you're going to be good. You're going to be an all star. He least. was. He's, he's he's literally like born to be an amazing basketball player. All he has literally. to do is like yeah. give it a little effort. It's it's crazy. It, it... But yeah, I, I actually agree with you. If he came out and like had like two dunks in like the first quarter, like I think Philadelphia would just rally around and be like, "Screw it, we forget everything." Yeah, <laughs> everybody starts cheering. Everybody I think, love it. I think we're just, we're the most um, we're just such a short attention span as a city. Honestly, like we hate you so much. And then like, but if you like 
like so fast, but if you come back and like show you're like you know like you're in, we'll love you again. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. Imagine, like everybody was talking shit on Earth at the beginning of the year because he wanted to leave. He says he wants to stay, and everybody loves him. And now we're all pissed that he's leaving because we fucking right. love Earth. It's we were just mad at him for a little bit, and we're happy. At the end of the day, I was not as much all mad anybody as wants Earth. to do is win. I was not as mad as Earth as I was. I wasn't mad Valley, either. But... <laughs> yeah. I just think. You know what I mean? But you know what I mean, though. At the end of the day, all no, anybody really wants is to win. That's it. We want to win, and we want, and we, we don't want to be worse than what our team is supposed to be. You know, like I, I think that's yeah. what pisses off uh, us off the most because the Sixers are so good, and we we underperform all the time. The Eagles, as they are, I mean, they are having their struggles, like roster wise, just player wise, coaching wise. But like, it seemed like we're gonna have like a little bit of a bounce back here this year to last year, and then we're underperforming again. Yeah. I want to I want to bring something up. It's like a touchy subject. I'm not going to get too into it. Um, but we had talked about previously on the podcast um, this episode, Jamie Tart. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, with Jamie Tart, one of the reasons he was such like a dickhead was because of family issues. His dad was like mean to him, basically. And with Ben Simmons, I saw somebody on Reddit did an analysis. Um, he, he went on, like, this mysterious break in the middle of the season. It, uh, it wasn't injury-related, but he missed, like, three or four games. I remember that. And prior to, prior to that break, he was absolutely tearing it up. That was, like, before the all, like up to the All-Star game and a little after it, when he was just on his tear. You know what I mean? I ben Simmons was playing Unreal, and everybody was hyped about him. And after that, he had some, he had some family issues that we probably shouldn't get into. But it was, like, it was pretty bad. And were... it, it, had, it had to deal with multiple people in his family. They were um, devastating family issues. To, to they were the absolutely least. devastating yeah, family were. issues. They were. And since that point, he his stats just all around were significantly worse. And so I think what may have happened is that may have broken him me- mentally, honestly. And then the fact that he got into the playoffs into such a high pressure situation and sort of was, I feel like he was just broken mentally then. And then he got broken as a player during that situation because he was so like, confused and everything and so when he's saying he's like not mentally there like i think there might actually be something to that like he he, the stats show that since he after that happened he was a much worse player and so i'm just thinking hopefully this sports psychologist can really get to him and like help him deal with that situation because i if he can i think he'll be like i think that could be the heart of the issue you know what i mean it very well could be and honestly like i i I think when we did talk about this a little while ago, I might have been a little harsh on him because, like, um, I mean, I didn't know what was going on, but I think I was in the heat of the moment. I might have been a little bit harsh on the uh, situation, but yeah. uh, it very well could be the issue, and the the stats do like tell a lot of the story. But I really, I mean, I honestly think, I mean, just to have a little bit of rebuttal, I think he did get like the acceptance though of the team like i feel like the team was like cut, like pretty like understanding about him the city was pretty understanding about the situation absolutely they let him do what he had to do miss games whatever like i mean like they, it's not like i mean doc rivers was like his his right hand man last year like he, he backed him up every chance he got even when it was I, the, uh, the worst um, i don't want it to come across like i was saying that the city broke him i think Potentially, no, what know. happened was that he broke himself. No, because I, I think if you're in that situation and you expect yourself to do good, and you just consistently keep doing worse, you can kind of just psych yourself out and go into like like a downward spiral, like all on your own doing. And I think maybe that was sort of what happened. It, it, yeah, it could have been. It could have been. Um, but like I'm, I'm just saying, like I mean, there was quite a bit of time after that break to to all the way to the, you know, the Hawk series. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that you can get over that kind of thing fast but you know i mean there was quite a bit of time in between it's not like it was like the week after he had to go enter the enter the no. semi like the, the eastern conference semis you know like but I, um i think i think the problem with that though is just that the whole situation that he's dealing with is not resolved it wasn't resolved at that point and i still don't think it's resolved it's fair i mean it is a, it's a ridiculous situation i feel like most people probably know what we're talking about who actually you know follow the team pretty well um not gonna get into it though. It's 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 a dicey situation. Pretty graphics, um, pretty bad. But um, but yeah, I mean, we're we're a hard city to play for though. We are. I mean, but like, but we also are. we love our players that do play hard, you know, and we love our players who overcome adversity, you know. Like, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying that like everybody's like gotta be this this hard nosed like avoid your feelings kind of guy, but 
you know, I mean, that's just how Philly is. I mean, we, I feel like our sports teams really did not have that much success prior to like our, our lifetime, like our parents' generations and stuff. They didn't really experience that much success. And these people go on and on and on about these players from their day and how great they were and everything. And they didn't even win anything. It seemed right. like they just, we just love everybody. If you play hard, we love it. I mean, there's been so many times where I've heard just like, you know, a million times, like how much people love Brian Westbrook and Brian Dawkins. And I know they were obviously in our era. Um, Not even that, like Harold Carmichael. Carmichael, like, uh, Cunningham, uh, like, you know, these guys are just like, just cemented in Eagles history. And they never even like won Freddie anything. Mitchell, like Freddie Mitchell. I, I wasn't there around then. Yeah. I mean, I and still Freddie remember Mitchell, that. Like, throughout his career, I don't think it was that great of a receiver, but he just, no, caught, that terrible. One, <laughs> he just caught that one fourth and 26, and he will forever live on in Eagles. Against Green game. Bay, dude. I'll never forget it. <laughs> and he, you catch that one fourth down, and you're cemented. Jason Avant, dude. Everybody loves Jason Avant. All he did was oh, go out there dude, and catch him. My mom he, loves he just Jason caught everything. Avant, dude. <laughs> my mom loves Jason Avant. He, had mean, sure he, was, he was like a, a throwaway player to me. I mean, not a throwaway player. He was good, but like, you know, like he's just like somebody in the past to me. My mom loves him. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, Jason Avant. Jason, Jason Avant's the man, but that's like, that's yeah. what I'm saying. All that's you got to do is play hard and we'll love you forever. Yeah. That's just what Ben Simmons has to do. If he just comes back and he plays hard, like, to be honest, we analyze this. Is a little bit of a uh, of a not a double standard but like we place our all-stars at such a high pedestal though you know what i mean like look at Carson, yeah we expect you know? too much of our Car- uh, all-stars i'll say that maybe not even too much though just like we like what because we don't get that many we really don't it, you have to be you have to be honest though it's pick and choose though because there's players like cox like to be fair cox is saying that we're not using the uh utilizing him properly on defense and that's true but this, There's been a this, few years where Cox hasn't played up to his all-star potential, and we haven't talked negative about, negatively about him at all. I mean, I think we have a little bit, but, he, I mean, Cox, Fletcher Cox is such a different situation because, like, I feel like this year is the real, the first real year where he's actually, like, we've really been on him as, that's city, fair. as that's a city, fair. you know? Um, I mean, there has been years where he's had down years, but, like, overall, he's been one of the best. I mean, he's an all-famer. An Eagles Hall of Famer. I mean, he's probably one of the best. Def- he's probably the best defensive tackle we've ever had, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's like, it's tough to really go for a guy who won a Super Bowl with us and pretty much brought this team from where we were six years ago to now. It's maybe like, I should take that statement back. I just felt like the past two no, years, I, he's no, but I know what you're saying. Slightly. I know he's what you're saying. Slightly, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I know what you're saying. Though, obviously, there's some kind of standard, like there's like double standards and stuff in that in that case. But we're, I mean, we're a tough city to play for. That's all you, all you can really yeah. say. Yeah, we're talking, but we do really love our guys that are like they show that like, their passion for the city and their, for the team that actually come out and play every week. The or, biggest problem you know, though is we, week. as like fans of the sport, yes, we love the team and we support the team. But as fans of the sport, of the sport, we also meme the the bad players to death, dude. <laughs> the fact that our entire city just absolutely memes these people to death, dude. <laughs> Aguilar with like the man catching the baby, and he's like, Aguilar couldn't have done that. <laughs> Dude, everybody was all over that. We absolutely but think about that. Aguilar for so Dude, long. That guy just got done with like saving like children from like a fire or something, and the first thing he thinks about is the Philadelphia Eagles. That's how <laughs> yeah, that first... that's in itself is enough to show how much we care about our teams. No, like... no, no, dude, no. He, the first thing he thought about was the Philadelphia Eagles, but the first thing he thought about was talking <laughs> shit on one of the players from the Philadelphia Eagles. Dude. But like, still, he thought that about sums the, it up perfectly. He still thought about the Eagles. <laughs> our weatherman, I, I'm pretty sure I saw Hurricane Schwartz on air showing a showing a this. dumpster. There was a dumpster flying through the river. Uh, it was like it was a flooded street in the city. And the dumpster was flying through it, and he's like, "Oh, there goes Ben Simmons leaving the city, making his exit." It's like everybody in the city just absolutely memes these people to death, and that's what they can't handle because all they're all on social media, and they just can't handle just how brutal we are on social media. We might be okay in person and like talking to each other, but then I I think people in the city just get online and start just going absolutely nuts. They comment some fucking wild shit on their posts. Yeah, they're like memeing them does, like crazy. Everybody does it a little bit. Every sports town does it a little bit, you know. I mean, I, yeah, I think we're a little overboard. That maybe. Little, well, I mean, we're a little bit above <laughs> the tier, but all right, all right. We let's, go off a little let's, bit. Uh, let's. Uh, I guess that's a little bit of a uh, you know kind of a segue. A little segue into, into the Eagles, yeah, I think, because we got to talk about that Raiders game. Got to talk about the Eagles. Got to talk about the Raiders game. 
It's bleak. It's uh, bleak. I mean, the thing with the thing with the Sixers though is the Sixers, despite the fact that they're like losing a couple, they lost a couple of games, but we lost games against the teams that are going to be probably top four or top five seeds, and we're winning games against the teams that we should, and. It's like even like a series against them, we'd probably drop a couple of games. So it's not a huge deal. We could come back from that. We'd probably beat them on another night. Just, I think the Sixers have a few problems, things that can be solved. And especially even the Ben Simmons situation, either we trade him for somebody who's going to benefit our team or he comes back and it benefits our team. We're, we're in a championship or bust situation. I don't know if we're going to get the championship, but I think regardless, we're going to at least make the playoffs and make a run for it. It's, there's positives. It excites me. I'm happy about the Sixers overall. And I'm optimistic. And also, the Eagles. Also, the Sixers are bleak. barely even a fifth of. They're not even. They're not even a fifth of the way through the season. The Eagles are almost halfway through the season, and we are two and five. So we're not even a tenth of the way through the season. Well, I mean, what? There's like, oh yeah, you're right. No, yeah, you're right. That's. I mean, we're not even close. I mean, we haven't even started yeah, yet. We're like, we're like literally like one twentieth in. So yeah. it's there's time. There's Some time. I thought there was like sixty games, like eighty games. Um, but yeah. So I mean, this Eagles game was. It was a shit show. I mean, absolutely. We, we didn't score points for two quarters. I mean, you literally, here's the thing. Here's you, the thing. You, you can't win a game like that. Here's the thing. Every week up until this week, it felt like we were losing because penalties were screwing us, and we were only losing the teams that should beat us. This felt like a, a week where we probably should have won, knowing that I think the Raiders are good, but I don't think they're as good as they're. I think they're kind of frauds to where like. They're a little bit better than average, but they have an outstanding record right now. Um, and they're going through, like, that whole coaching situation. Um, that coach they have I now, though, is the man, though. He's I don't know if you've done any research. Was it their this offensive guy. coordinator? He was a special teams coach, I believe. Okay. I believe – I mean, I'm, he, maybe it was in the past that he was a special teams coach. I know I know for a fact he was a special teams coach at one point. I'm not sure what he was this year, though. Um, okay. But he, I know he was a special teams guy. That's what people talk about. Um, but he's the man. He is a okay. real right. football guy. He's been in the league for 15 years, something like that, coaching. Uh, I thought potentially there was turmoil there before because of the coaching situation. Well, so there we definitely is turmoil. To win in on them. But the guy they got was probably the best guy they could have possibly got. You know what I mean? Okay. So, All right. Regardless, though, didn't you feel that this was a win? I felt like, especially, I just felt good about this game. I thought we had a chance. I thought we were a team that was, I thought we were going to be an average team this year even after the first few games, because I thought we lost against better teams. And after this game, I did not come away thinking that. I mean, I predicted a win, I believe, last week on the pod, um, just because I really... I we really all did. Thought, I think we all did. Um, I know the Raiders are... A good, I, I actually think the Raiders are a good team. For a while there, I was thinking they were frauds. First five weeks or so. But when they won, uh, not this week against us, the week before, when they came back after that, um, after the whole turmoil with uh, Gruden and everything, and they came back and won. I know they played a bad team. I can't remember. It might have been the Lions. I'm not sure who they, who they beat. They beat a bad team. I think it was the Lions. The Lions or Texas or something like that. Um, they came back and they won, and they won handily. I was like, okay, that shows that shows some grit there. I mean, you had a, just had one of the biggest scandals in, in sports history go on your team, and you come back and get a win. I thought maybe we could like take advantage of that kind of in a way, and um, this kind of a trap game kind of thing. I mean, they were four and two, we're two and four. I thought we could get the win. I think the Raiders are actually a good team. Um, I'm not gonna get too. How much good? Time. I mean, I think I think they'll I think they'll get ten wins. Really? Yeah, I mean they're five and two right now. Um, I think it, I could, yeah, I could easily see them getting ten wins, ten I mean, and seven. They'll get ten wins, maybe least, more, at least, maybe, maybe more. I'm, I, I mean, they're a good team. I think they're. Are they in a division with the Chiefs? I'm not sure. I the, think I, so. I, I can't. I think they're in a division with the Chiefs, and the Chiefs are in shambles right now. Um, Surprising, yes, but they are in shambles. Crazy. They beat us. They beat us, and they're in yeah, shambles. They did. That's just us. I mean, it seems like we're the only team they were freaking able to put up their normal amount of points against. Um. But yeah, I mean the Raiders are uh, are a better team than I thought they were. I was calling fraud. I was kind of like putting them in that uh, almost in that spot where like the Panthers were and the Broncos. They were. seemed like they could have been frauds, and yeah, you're right. The Panthers were in the same situation. Yeah. They ended up being frauds, and I guess Broncos, the Broncos same thing. Like frauds, yeah, Raiders have proven they're legit. Broncos they're... had to be frauds. Broncos have like two good players on their team. 
Yeah, I, they have that cool. They that, that sick defense. That yeah, says. their defense is good. They've got Cortland Sutton. They got. Those, I just they got a good running back core. Um, and and they got Cortland Sutton. Their quarterback situation. Yeah, screwed, Jerry Judy but... apparently uh, uh, unfortunately got hurt. Yeah, but but yeah, I'm. I, I mean, think they need a running back and some and a and a quarterback. I mean, they got a like, decent running back core with Melvin Gordon and um that new guy uh ah what's his name Williams some, I think it's Williams. Yeah, um, I think it's like Josh, think Josh Williams. I think or Jacob, I don't know what it is. It's, it's William, it's Jay Javante, Williams. Javante Williams? Javante Williams, not Josh. I don't know what I was thinking. I think that's what it is. Um, but yeah, he's good. It is Javante. Yeah, there you go. Um, they're both good. Um, but yeah, going back to the Eagles game, I called the win. Um, it looked good for four minutes when we drove down the field and, and literally scored at will, it seemed like. like I think it was It's like bad eight, if it only looked good eight. for the first four minutes. Oh, yeah, though. it's horrible. But like for that, I was like, oh, man, we drove down the four, field for four minutes and eight plays. We haven't done that all year. You know, we haven't had a quick drive all year. Well, I've actually got a question for you about that. I we kind of lost all of ry- rhythm as soon as Miles Sanders got hurt. Do you think that had a big thing to do it? Like, do you think that played a big part? It's hard to say that that is a big thing because of how little we've used him this year. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know, so I know. It, but but in, we did come out with the game plan. We're going to run with him for once. Right in that game, it seemed like it was a, a almost a deciding factor that we, yeah, right? when we lost. Miles Sanders, we we, we lost, lost the game. any ability to run. Like it seems like like even maybe even if we're not running with him, just the threat that we can run with Miles Sanders and get a lot of yards makes it easier on the offense. I think maybe taking away that threat maybe made us one dimensional in a way. I I feel like that's kind of how it is in the NFL these days, where like the run game is like if you have a good run game, the uh, passing game can thrive because obviously especially like, with. I, I, especially with our offense, with how often we utilize RPOs, like right. I'm sure, like the run threat really plays a part. That's what I was about to say with the play, the play action and RPOs, like which most teams run now. Like it's, I, can, I feel like we kind of utilized it um, the best almost ever in the Super Bowl year. Yeah. Um, and I kind of think that kind of like may, maybe even shape what we see now in the, in the league the last four, four right four years after uh, since the Super Bowl. Well, you yeah. heard during the Super Bowl, all the uh, all the pundits and everything were on uh, their shows and they were like RPOs. Like it was right. like some That's new thing. Saying. Like it, 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 it's not like a new thing, but like we kind of just like blew it out we brought of the water. It, we brought it like, into the mainstream almost. Right. Yeah. And uh, I think it's not, it's not an uh, uncommon thing nowadays. In the NFL. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, but yeah, no, but, I think, was it more like it sort of a college scheme before? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'd say, yeah, be, just because how often college quarterbacks were on the ball. Um, yeah. But yeah, a, anyway, the run game obviously opens up the pass game. Which is, that's just a fact. Everybody talks about it. All the announcers talk about it. All the analysts talk about it. Um, we could beat it to death, but, you know, that's just how it is. And um, It's the reason why we've been screaming for them to run it for right. the past five weeks. And I guess you're right. Like, that threat obviously is there um, so that the, you know, the, the pass game can thrive. But, I mean. Because Gainwell's this... more of, like, a passing down back. He's not really the runner that we want. No, not really. Um, I think he is good, though. Um, Will he take over this week uh, against the Lions and and do something uh, with the run game? Yeah, I mean, don't we'll I, I, don't get me wrong. Kenny Gainwell is good. I think he's. I think I like what I'm seeing from him. He's maybe the best pass down back that we've had in a while. I mean, we thought Miles was that for a little while. He, he was able to, to like you know like well, he had a drop situation this last couple of years, but I don't know. He's had a few. He's had a few good catches, but I don't think he's like. He's not like a pure passing down running back though, like Gainwell. No, is. I no, mean you're right. Yeah, he's Sanders not. is sort of like a do it all. Yeah. Um, I just don't think I think I we've had Sproles for a while, but Sproles was sort of, uh, on the end of his career. He was like, he was like in the twilight. He was like a dual threat. Like he was like almost a wide receiver at that point. Yeah, I just I I like I like I like Gainwell. I think he's sort of like a, like an Alvin Kamara type back, and I like what he brings. I just don't. He just obviously can't be the main running back of the team. No, not in now at least. Um. It's going to be an interesting game against the Lions. This is a huge game because the Lions are a bad team. So if we think that we're <sighs> at least average, we better win this game. And we're going to Detroit. So, I mean, we're not home. Uh, Lions are 0-7. Uh, I'm scared. I'm scared, too. That's not good that we're scared it's of a not good. winless team. I I am nervous that we could lose this game, which is which is bad. Because I feel like we usually, even though we're a bad, we've been like pretty bad the last two years. We still we usually bad teams. We usually 
come and handle our business against against the bad teams, you know? Like but it's it seems like every for the past few years, like we had a bad start to the season and then we'd start of start to like pull together towards the end of the year. And I just don't know if that's gonna happen this year. You know what it's you know what it has been the last couple of years? It's been like we like come and handle our business against the bad teams and then we lose to like every middle of the pack team in the league. And then we beat like one ran, random good team. We beat like one or two random really good teams, like the Saints last year. And um, who did we beat? Oh, I can't remember who it was. Oh, the Packers. The Packers. Yeah, two, we took out the ago. Packers, dude. Uh, Carson came in and threw like 300 yards and like four touchdowns against the Packers. Everybody in, had us out in, of that game. In Lambo. And I was like, oh, dude, Carson's back. Like, you know. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and then we go on a tear and we make the playoff. Yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah, we did, actually. Yeah, that's, that's really true. Um, but yeah, it's just like it seems like against these teams that were like, it's almost like we can't get up for these games, you know? I guess, yeah, I, which is weird. It just doesn't seem like the, the Philly way at all, like the Eagles way. Uh, you know, going back like to like what we were, last like like ten years ago. I'm going back pretty far now, but like you know, back when we were like making the playoffs every year, you know, going to the championship game, and it seemed like we were just like you know a solid twelve and four. That's that's what we were for so long, twelve and four, mm-hmm. like good team. Solid team. We win the division, stuff like that. But um, yeah. I mean, it's tough. I, I, it's tough to be nervous against the Lions. It's tough. I mean, it's. You're right. This is the first year in a while where it's just you don't. You have no hope. You have no hope against these these bad teams. It's. I don't know. I just think. Yeah, like I in the past, we have we've no at least hope. been like a middle of the road team. Like, I, and we have a little bit of hope, but like. Yeah. It's kind of scary. Like I'm scared to play play one of the worst teams in the NFL. That's I mean, not good. They, they are the worst team in the NFL. Like they have the worst record in the NFL. I think they're only winning this team right now. I I just don't I don't I don't know what we can do. I think before the season started, we were saying that we liked what Nick Sirianni was saying. We liked oh my god. Dude. We liked his, the direction that he was taking the team. We liked that he was gonna Dude, I mean sort of cater to different players and make the offense uh all inclusive. Uh, and dedicated to what those players can do best. Um, he t- he certainly talked the talk. Can you say that he walked the walk? Because I don't think I can. Absolutely not. He actually did the opposite. He did nothing to help our stars, I think. <laughs> I think he did He's... nothing to help Miles Sanders. He did nothing to help the defense. He did nothing to help Jalen. And, I mean, Devontae Smith is having a decent year, but he's not being utilized as much as he, I think he can. Um. Did you see... Would you fire him and rehire Doug Peterson in a heartbeat? I don't know if I would fire fire him and rehire Doug, but I would say that, and I actually said this last year too. I didn't want to get rid of Doug. No, no, I don't. I don't. I don't understand. What, I, Doug was. It should have been Carson or Doug. It time. should not have been both. That's and I Doug... said I said that multiple times last year. He... He was here four years and he won a Super Bowl in one of them. He missed he missed the playoffs one time. One time. Well, and no, it sorry, was sorry, in the middle. Times. Sorry, two times. But like his rookie year was like a rough year for us. Um, yeah, I mean he had to he had to get the team around him. It was Carson's just, rookie year and everything. Yeah, but I just feel like his rookie year compared to Sirianni's rookie year, there's just a different feel on the team. It's we were I thought I thought we were competitive. I didn't I didn't mind him that much well, that year. The rookie year, the city was calling for his head. They, I mean, but then again, we do that to every coach that doesn't. Yeah, have that's a that's season. that's a given. Any yeah. coach's first year, we're gonna call for their head. If they don't have a winning season, they call for their head. But I mean, personally, I like Doug since he went, when he got here in that rookie year. I think you said, just said you did too. Um, and also, I knew that Carson was gonna be good. It, he just seemed like a good quarterback. Um, he did, year, and and just seemed like he had potential. And he obviously he came out and had a breakout year in his in his sophomore year. Um, that's a problem. It's a problem because. Carson Wentz, as much as we like to hate on Carson Wentz, and I like to hate on Carson Wentz. You, um, like, you like to hate on Carson Wentz. I like to hate on Carson Wentz. He he, sh- he showed flashes, and he looked good. He looked promising. I, I mean, We liked gonna... what we saw out of him his, his rookie year. He showed potential, and he looked like he was going to get better, and he did get better. He's actually having and... a worse rookie. He's actually having a worse. I saw a stat today. His first 11 games with, our, with the team and Jalen's uh, first 11 starts with the team. Jalen is blowing him out of the water. Really? Stats wise. Eye test wise, it's just not there. Not not wins wise, but eye test wise. I mean, stats wise. What do you say eye test wise? 
eye test wise, I liked Carson better. I did too. I but, but I but I don't think this is all J one's fault with what's going on right now. You don't know. You never know. You never it's know. To, it's, it's so hard to tell. It's hard to tell. And the thing he is, he does do dumb things all the time. He really does. He does dumb things, but also. Sometimes he throws the ball away, which I like. You know, Carson didn't really throw the ball away. At, yeah, the end can't of be, we can't career. be getting excited about somebody throwing the ball away when they're supposed to, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's bad. That's, that's bad. I just, if there's, also, there's parts of I, his game I that you have to, to like. Like, I like his running ability. I like, he can make some yeah. throws. It's just, I don't know if he can read the field. Yeah, I mean, that seems like, and Carson, as much as we judged him on that a lot um, last year, for the most part, I feel like he was pretty good at it. Like, he's pretty good at reading his progressions. Yeah, I think he was. I think he was better than Jalen Hurts is at reading progressions. I just, I mean, that's that's a given. I just feel like and that's. I know just because we're on the Carson Wentz train right now, kind of like talking about him. He's having a good year this year. Yeah, they're they're. I know they're three and four and they had a rough a uh, rough start. They were. I mean, they were really injured and they had like a lot of their offensive uh, weapons like injured and stuff. He's thrown one interception and has like thirteen touchdowns or something like that. Like he, he's on pace for like a historic year, like it, like um touchdowns and interceptions wise. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't like to see that. Also, I saw he's not no, fumbling he as like... much now. He fumbled every game with us. I know. It's I think he has like what like two fumbles. Oh, no, sorry, he has yeah. two interceptions. <laughs> he has two interceptions this year, and both of his I think interceptions. I two fumbles. T- t- both of his interceptions were falling over and shuffling the ball to someone. Classic typical, Carson play, typical Carson and play. he just throws yeah. it right to the the linebackers. <laughs> classic, classic. It was such a classic card. Other than that, basically zero interceptions downfield. I, I, uh, I have a I have a stat that I want to bring up actually. Go for it. Also, real quick though, yeah, like Carson Wentz, I, I, he's playing better than I thought he would, and I, I I'm gonna have to eat some shit on this. So, you know, he's 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 good, and he's good, and. It probably was the situation here. I don't know. He gave up on the team, so I think I say fuck him. But whatever. Yeah, I mean, I'm 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 mostly on board with that. I mean, I think we had to get. I think he had to go as well. I was pretty on. I, was, I towards the end of the year, I was pretty like with you on he had to go. It's just yeah. It, I think he yeah. We we agree. He had to go. Doug probably didn't have to go. Doug did not have to go. The, Doug did not have to go. Casualty of. I think he actually would have been bullshit. great with Jalen because of how yeah how Doug likes to be aggressive. Yeah. He's he's just a better play caller than Nick oh, Sirianni yeah, is at this point. Yeah, but go we ahead. thought we thought say? Doug didn't run the ball. <laughs> what what yeah. did we know? Yeah. Jesus, I don't understand that at all. The one thing I want to bring up, uh, the one stat I want to have you look up, is um, look up Jalen Hurts' time, average time to throwing for throwing the ball. Because I think I saw somewhere that it takes him like on average, like I think about like five seconds to throw the ball, which which I saw I think was like the worst in the league, and. I think most elite quarterbacks throw it within like two seconds. So I thought that was pretty bad because he's just kind of sitting back there and looking and not throwing it, which you can't do. Let's see. Average time to pass. You know what I mean? Because you want somebody who can make that read real quick and then just quick sling it out because that's when the receiver's open. It's just, it just seems like he's waiting too long. And it's like, you, you, you know, when you were playing football as a kid, the first like three seconds, you make your move and then you're open, and then after that, you're just kind of running around trying to trying to get open, and that's when he's throwing the ball. Yeah. He needs to throw the ball earlier when they're actually making their cuts, or else we're just never gonna have any success on offense. It's actually pretty hard to find the stats. Surprise me. Well, I mean, if you can't find it, we can just take it for what I saw. You guys yeah. can look it no, up but, at home and no, but, comment it. But in honestly, the, in I the know the what you're saying. I comments. do know. I do know what you're saying because. There are so many times where he is just running wild. Like, he looks like Russell Wilson out there. And and Russell Wilson does a great job of it, um, obviously. But, uh, you know, he's just running for his life. But not in the way that it's like, oh, the pocket broke down in two seconds. You know? The pocket's there for, like, five seconds. And he, it's just he and, waits too long, and then eventually the pocket has to break like, at some point. It's, and yeah, then right. he runs. It, right, exactly. It and, shouldn't get to that point. He should have thrown the ball already. It's like he's missing. It's almost like he's missing his first target, his first like option. You know what I mean? Like he's well, missing that's what the window. I, it's just it, it's you have to be able to read it in that first few, in those first few seconds when they're running like the ten yards and then cutting or whatever. You have to throw. You have I to mean, throw it at the right at the right time. And if he's waiting five seconds, he's clearly missing that timing. I mean, this is like a ridiculous comparison, obviously, but like look at Tom Brady, dude. 
he's literally made a career of just making quick throws when 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 he thinks when the first guy's not open. You know. That's what I saw. I saw. I think I saw it, they the person who commented this on Reddit said that I think Tom Brady and like Aaron Rodgers their average Rodgers, pass. It's like exactly it's like two seconds. Yeah. It's Aaron, like sub two. It's potentially sub two seconds. Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, all these elite quarterbacks, Hall of Fame quarterbacks, they get rid of the ball. I mean. Yeah. I mean. Think about it. count two seconds and then count five seconds. There's such a huge difference, and especially in the offensive line. You know, I mean, you're making your offensive line work harder. You know. Yeah, and not only because it's like the receiver breaks, and then you're giving uh, the def- the defensive backs time to catch up to the receiver and then make a play on the ball if you're throwing it that late. Yeah, no, you're right. It's yeah. just it's something he has to work on, and I don't know if that's something you can teach the the ability to comprehend that fast. I know my me myself, I feel like I can't comprehend like super fast. It takes me a second. And that just doesn't seem like something that I could work on to get better. I think that's just how your brain works. Yeah, I mean, I guess. But, like, I mean, if you're going to – if you have aspirations to be a starting quarterback in this league, that you're just going to have to be good at that, you know? Like, What's he going to have to start doing, like, mental math really quick or something just to work <laughs> on his, like, ability to solve problems quickly? I don't I don't know how you can solve that. It's The thing is, like, he looks so calm during the game, though. He know? does. He does. He looks, looks so calm. calm. He looks like a leader. Yeah. He runs great. Sometimes he makes good plays. And uh, I'm I, just not sold. I'm not sold at all. I buy like like will like I will like I was saying earlier. I I think there's a lot of the this, the offensive scheme that is like not helping him at all, in the way that we're like running these plays. Like a lot of those times where you're like making that quick throw, it's like a slant down the middle for like seven yards. You know, like, like we're doing these like streaks down the sideline. We're doing like uh just these ridiculous plays where like nobody's down the middle or we're, or we're just dumping it off to a running back. And like, I think that's where 90% of his quick throws go to is just a, a dump to the running back, which is like not working. Obviously like we're just the, the screen passes and the, uh, and the RPOs are just not working. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's Nick Sirianni play calling is so outrageous. I feel like he's coming out there. Like he's, some sort of like artist like throwing all these crazy plays out there and they're not working you just got to keep it simple and build off of the other the previous play i, I can't I feel like the, I, I feel like the art of play calling you know what i mean it's not calling a crazy play and having it work it's having it's calling good plays and having them build off of each other no you're right it's it's having a good drive dude like it's like having like a 10 12 play drive and and, and scoring a touchdown like it's it doesn't have to be these like giant 40 yard plays and like no and I think that's what like most teams are really good at. If you look at the like, if you look at the Packers, dude, that they have like a, a bunch of these plays where they get like Aaron Jones to run up the, up the middle for like seven yards, a nice little like uh, out route to like uh, 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 Devonte Adams. I mean, he's like a, a, an all kind of threat, but he's not always going downfield. You know, he's like he, a lot of times he's in the middle. A lot of times he's doing these like curl routes. And, and that's what like Nick Sirianni says stuff like that, where he says like, "We're gonna have one play." And this receivers are, and uh, out of that play, we're gonna have five different plays that we can run, so that the defense can't tell which play we're gonna run. Okay. But in order for that to work, you have to hit the play repeatedly, so that they start like wondering what's gonna happen. That if, if you don't if you don't hit it ever, it's just never gonna work. Right. Which ma- which makes my point about like you're making Jalen Hurts. Are, are you making Jalen Hurts play like a, a style of gameplay that's just never been seen before? You know, like what are you? Yeah, talking? and maybe Jalen Hurts is sitting there thinking, like, wait, what which the hell of the are five plays about? are we playing this yeah, play? Yeah, I think he's just sitting there, like, what the hell are you talking about, dude? Like, he might be overcomplicating things for Jalen. Because I, I honestly, if I was in that situation, and every formation had five or six different plays that could be played out of it, I might just be like, it might take me a second, like, to be like, wait, which one are we doing? I don't know. It's just like I think he's just making it way too difficult for him to 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 play well. And I, I think that's why I'm I'm still in like I mean not I I'm not all the way in but like I'm still like I'm here for, to have Jalen Hurts for the next year, and I think there's actually no not even an option like we were talking about last week. Um, we got to stick with him next year. I mean I don't think there's not like unless in, unless there's like a NFL starting caliber QB that becomes open to us like a like a actually like a good free agent which I don't think, don't think there is in the next year. Um, we got to stick with him for another year, and I just don't. Think yeah, well. That, Go ahead. Would you ever get to a point where would you you would consider going with Minshew over Hertz? Because I think there's no point. There's no point. You don't think Minshew could be better than Hertz in this situation? I think he might not be. I honestly, think, I think there's potential that he could be better than Hertz is now. But I think th- Minshew but, could win us more games potentially. Potentially, I agree. 
but I think, but why would we even waste that time? Why wouldn't we just use that time to develop Jalen? Because because Minshew's not going to get as far. Like, yeah, Minshew has a lower ceiling, I think. He's than not. Does. Yeah, right. Exactly. He's not even close to like. Minshew is not going to be our guy for the future. Like that's not. No. Even, that's never going to happen. So why not bank on Jalen for now? You know. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Like I just I think that's the only way to go about it because there's no there's no reason to put Minshew out there when Jalen's healthy. And honestly, if if Hertz doesn't work out and we're in a situation where we just end up stacking our defense with um high level pick like high high level picks, first round first round picks that are really high up and second round picks that are really high up. Um and then two years from now we have another like really high draft pick and we pick a quarterback, that might be a great situation, you know? Right. And that, I think that's what the, kind of the situation we're falling into right now. We might just have to sit back and embrace the tank. Yeah, I mean, I think... Jalen's the tank commander. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate. I think we thought, like, maybe Jalen could, like, bring us to, a, like, a little bit of a higher level, maybe go, like, 500 this year and see potential. It's not looking well, that it, way right now. It's unfortunate because we win the Super Bowl and we think, okay, we can probably win it again at some point because we just won it with this team. And at this point, the chances of that happening two... are absolutely zero. With the Super Bowl, dude, we had just too many, like, veterans. Like just, We had too many like... veterans. Yeah, It's it... just unfortunate. None of the people who won the Super Bowl with us the first time will win it a, a second time with us. No, not with us. No. I don't think so. I mean, maybe there might be an odd one here and there, like that we like. I don't know. Alignment, maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Honestly, at this point, probably not. Just because I think it's gonna be a while before we get back to that point. Um, you don't think Lane Johnson can still be here? Nah, dude. I think he's already on his way out. Honestly. Because of uh, Dillard and Mylotta. Yeah, I mean, Dillard Mylotta. I mean, he's obviously on the other side, but like, I mean, he's just getting older. Uh, he's had all those injuries. Like, I think he's probably got like maybe three years left, four years left. In the Jeez. League. Yeah, I don't want another Peter situation where he stays too long. Right, right. I mean, how old is he now? Like, he's... Lane Johnson? I feel like he's probably like 29, right? Yeah, I think he's like pushing 30, right? 31. Which isn't that 31. old. Uh, 31. 31. Ah. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I think... Yeah, he's, got, he's like, got three years left. He's got like three years, four years left in the league, potentially, you know? Not, I don't like, want 35-year-old Lane Johnson. No, yeah. I mean, he's... I thought we'd think of these guys as, like, younger just because, like, I don't know, just because of the Super Bowl, you know? It seemed like they were all like, hitting their stride at the same time. But yeah, they were, realistically, yeah. they were older, you know? Yeah, because they were, yeah, they were, like, at their peak bet then, and it's been, like, it's been almost five, five years. years. Yeah, it's been five years Yeah, now. so. But we're still riding high off that Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, I mean, woo! 2017, <laughs> Phil- maybe. Philadelphia is the only thing we got <laughs> in the last, no. uh... God, since the Phillies won in 2008. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, I'm putting all my eggs in the Sixers basket. Hopefully that pans out in some way. So, it's, it's sorry, for the, sorry, sorry for the depressing pod, by the way, you guys. We're kind of kind of gloomy I about like, the situation. I feel like Philly's all in the right same now. spot as we are, honestly, though. Just where, like, it's just like, it could be, we could be in a little bit of a uh, a rut for a little while in Philly sports. It's honestly. our only hope. Our only hope right now is the Sixers. I thought. We hey, thought at the beginning of the season it could be the Eagles. I'm but... going to throw a little curveball in here, and I know we don't talk about them much. The Flyers are looking pretty good this year. Are they? Yeah, I mean, we got Cam Atkinson all, uh, last year in free agency. He's he's looking like a beast. And Drew's having a great year. Obviously, he's been our captain for so long. Gotta love Drew. I know I don't want to talk about uh, hockey much in this podcast. But the Flyers, they're looking good this year. I think. They I got, mean, if you want to... If you want to end the pod on a little Flyers talk, this is like, I think this is the one week we can do it. Caputi's yeah, not yeah. here. Little, I'm sure uh, the fans who have stuck around this long won't mind, mind a little Flyers talk. For those of you who don't know, just a little bit I, of a, uh, just a little I'm not upper. a big Flyers head. I really don't really have any idea what's going on with the Flyers. Brits, that's his favorite of all the sports, so Brits knows everything that's going on with the Flyers. Uh, it's, probably real, tie, it's probably tied with football, but yeah. Real quick, I just want to get in a prediction uh, for the Eagles game. Right, uh, against the Lions, it. and then we'll and then we'll go into a little bit of Flyers talk for you at the end. So end off with a little a little hype a little about the Flyers. A little high note. Yeah, yeah a little high note. Come on, something positive. You know, I think we got it at this point. I think we just talked about how bleak the uh, Eagle situ- situation was for about twenty minutes, but and the fact that we're scared of the Lions. 
I still think you have to predict a win. I know we're bad. I know that I'm scared going against the Lions. I'm scared against uh, the Giants and the Red or the, the Washington football team, um, which isn't a good sign. But I do have faith that we just have enough talent, raw talent on this team to beat a team like the Lions. The Lions only have like five good players, maybe. Yeah, and I think I mean, we have more than that. There, I say we beat. I say we beat the Lions, like twenty-eight, twenty-one. I can 28, see that. 28-24. I think it's gonna be a close game. I think it will be a close game. I, I do. I mean, I think the Lions' offense is like better than people give them credit for. I mean, they got DeAndre Swift. They got um. Jared DeAndre Goff. Swift's amazing. DeAndre Swift is a beast. Jared Goff is a serviceable quarterback. I mean, I really like to talk shit on him, but he's you know he's a good quarterback. He gets the um, job done. He's not a bad quarterback done. at he's all. Like, he's like a Kirk Cousins, like, uh, maybe, but maybe not with the biggest arm, you know? I mean, he um, literally took the Rams to the – I know that they had a great defense, but he went to the Super Bowl. You can't yeah. be a bad quarterback and go to the Super Bowl. Right, right. And um, their offensive line is actually stepping up this year. They got Penny Sewell now. Penny Sewell's an absolute beast. He actually got in a little tussle with uh, Aaron Donald last week, which is <laughs> – you got to be a savage to get in a tussle with Aaron Donald. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, they're, they're – they're, uh, their offense is a little bit better than people give them credit for. I know they're 0 and 7. I actually think uh, they're they kind of an, play, a fraud 0 and 7. They are a fraud 0 and 7. They play every team to the death. Like it's like they've had a couple. They're in every games. game and they're they're not playing terrible teams. I think they had. I'm surprised couple, that they're 0 and 7. They had a couple heartbreaker games, dude. I'm well. The uh, Justin Tucker 66 yard field goal that was against them, right? I think so. I think they're they're better than the Jets and they're better than the Dolphins. It's it, I think no contest. Oh, yeah. I don't. They beat. They would beat the Jets. They would beat the Texans. Uh, they would probably beat the Broncos. Dolphins would be tough. They might not be. Or did they, they play they, the Broncos? I didn't lose actually. I think they did, and I, I'm surprised at that. They might have. They might have lost the the Broncos early in the season. But um, I know we're kind of like gassing up the Lions right now, even though they're 0 seven. Their coach is an absolute freak in a good way. He's, I like it. Yeah, I like M- it. M- MCDC it. dude. He's it's Matt Patricia, right? No, no, the new guy, uh, oh, uh Dan oh. Campbell, Dan Campbell, the, okay. the guy who okay, said they're okay. gonna bite people's kneecaps in the in the. Do you remember that guy? <laughs> no, no, uh, no, no, oh, no, did, no, no I did not know that. Earlier in his uh his first press conference with the team, he was telling like we're we're gonna go out there, we're gonna be biting people's kneecaps, we're gonna be like, we're gonna be fighting to the death kind of thing. Like he's a savage, dude. He's like a. He's a well, guy. I mean, Sewell's clearly taking that to heart. Yeah, right. He's a huge football guy, dude. He he was. Okay, like, okay. Did you see him crying after they lost? No, I like he that. Cried I think that shows some press, emotion. He cried on the uh, on the podium after they Dude, lost. Dude, if if uh, Sirianni was crying, I would I would like that a little bit more. Show a little, show a little heart. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I don't know. It's just like I mean, crying Maybe on the podium, not. like it, it's, it's it's one thing. Cause, Might be like, a bad because he's like a big like he's. A, like, you know, uh, Sirianni's kind of like a clown at this point. <laughs> Sirianni started crying. He'd come off like a big baby. Dan, Everybody would clown Dan, him in Philadelphia. Dan Campbell's kind of like this big guy who's like, you don't expect him to cry. You know, like, he just has so much Dan, passion. Dan Campbell's the guy. He was uh, the he was the coach of the uh, – was he the coach of the Falcons for a little while? No, he was – I think he was defensive coordinator for somebody. Okay. Somebody. Okay. I can't remember his name. But, um, no, but uh, the Lions are – they're a fraud 0-7. They're not a good team, sure. though. They're not a good yeah, team. Yeah, they're not a great team. They're fraud 0-7. I think they could end up – they're not going to end up with the worst record, but they're going to end up with a bad record. Yeah. I mean, they're going to win a game. <laughs> hopefully not this game. <laughs> but hopefully not this game. I am going to predict a win. I think the Eagles' defense will come out for this game. And I think we are going to hold them to, to, to a, maybe like a – I'm going to predict – a 24, 24 to 17. 24 to 17? 17. Okay. 24 to 17. So what did you say? You no said, safeties? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> there could be some safeties. Maybe it'll be uh, 26 to 17. Or, I said 28, uh, or, 24. 28, 24. Honestly, okay. I'm going 28, 26. I think, I think, or no, 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 no. 30, 24. 30, 24. I think 30, we'll get a, 24. no, 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 no. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm getting confused. Yeah. 28-26. I think they'll get a safety against us for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go 24-17. That we hold them to a low, low scoring, like low scoring for them. The defense. This is kind of that game where I think the Eagles defense steps up, and uh, Jalen Hurts gets what he has to do done. 24 points is like, you know, it's just, it's decent. Um, 
I think our defense definitely has the potential to stop this Lions offense. They don't have too good of an offense. No, I mean the, at all. No, exactly. I mean, like they got like some, they got some young guys at wide receiver. I think like, that they pulled in that are kind of like doing all right. Um, yeah, twenty four seventeen. I think we win the game. If we don't win the game, it's gonna be a tragedy of a podcast next week. Oh my god, <laughs> podcast next week. If we lose, it's I feel like be this one's already been horrendous. a downer, and the next one might be even worse. <laughs> But, don't say uh, that. Don't say that. It's it's, it's going to be it's going to be very no, joyous and not, very fun. So definitely come stick around for the next podcast. Hey, I mean, you know, I feel like Philly fans almost like to hear us like talk about the realness of how how we're struggling. You know, it's bleak. It's bleak. Let's be it's, honest, it's, guys. It's, it's bleak. bleak. It's bleak, and you got to realize it. You know, it's it's yeah. But yeah, so I mean, you're you're, you're going the most of it. You're going. Uh, what do you say? 28, 26? 28, 26. 28, we're gonna 26. win. I'm going twenty four seventeen. We'll see how it goes. I've actually been. I feel like in the games that we've uh, that we've won, which I know have only been two, I've been uh, actually pretty close with the scores. <laughs> Every game we've won, I predicted a loss. Every game we've lost, I predicted a win. So maybe uh, hopefully that changes. Start, you need to start picking losses. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not switching this. I'm not switching this. I'm, I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna test it. A little test. All right. If you guys, if we lose, you guys know who to blame. Yeah, you gotta bring Jackson. <laughs> um. But yeah, there's a prediction for the uh, Detroit game. I um, think we get it done. Go into a little bit of the Flyers. Just a little bit. Yeah, of Yeah, let's just, let's end on a bright let's, brief, let's end on a bright note. Just, just a little brief. Flyer, spark of joy for the hockey, audience. I know. I know. There's uh, you know, Philly's a big uh, you know, Eagles, Sixers town. It seems like, and the Phillies are kind of fading out. Uh, Flyers, they're three one and one. Three uh, one and one. Okay, one one little overtime loss, three, I guess. Three one and one. I actually went to the game. Where they was the overtime loss? We lost in a shootout. Uh, brutal game. We actually ended up tying it up with like four four minutes left or no two minutes left. We scored two goals to make it four four and we went into overtime and then shootout and we lost. Uh, tragedy, but it was it's great brutal game. when you come back like that and then lose. I know. It's just like I've gosh, actually such been to multiple you know games I mean? like that with the Flyers where they've come back and tied it up and then lost in overtime. Um, but yeah, Flyers offense is rolling. Um, it just stinks because sometimes it feels like you have all that momentum. Did I lose you? No, I'm here. Keep going, okay. brother. I thought I lost you. Uh, you look like you froze. But no, yeah, it, it seems like you have the momentum going to overtime, and then like and NHL overtime has turned to this weird thing where it's like they all like it's like it seems like the other team just holds the puck in their own zone. It's I know it's three on three. Is it three on three? It's in three on overtime? three. And a lot of times the other team will just like pass it through their own zone and kind of just wait for the perfect shot. Um, and it ends up being like three minutes of possession, and it's kind of weird. Um, well, it's annoying that, because unlike un, unlike NHL three on three arcade, you can't knock over the goalie and uh, just score <laughs> score it in. A little. Not I don't know if any of you guys have played that game, but NHL three on three was my jam, yeah. and I just find it cool that uh, the NHL has now adopted like a three on three playstyle for at least some aspect of the game. Yeah, no, three on three is electric. It gets really good. Um, there's kind of been this shift into like just waiting for the perfect shot and passing it through your own zone and bring it out. So like it wastes a lot of time, but anyway, okay. but anyway, uh, fires looking good. The offense is rolling. Cam Atkinson is a great pickup. Um, unfortunately, I think we how lost... good is Cam Atkinson? Cam Atkinson is a solid. He's a stud. Honestly, he's a stud okay. player. Um, he's not like a you know like a forty goals a year guy, but like he's like a he's a good player, and um. I think he was a great pickup. Ryan Ellis, we picked up in the offseason. Also, he's a uh, veteran defenseman. We actually lost him. I think he actually, I think he just got hurt, um, which which sucks. And I like I like him. Unfortunate. Uh, Keith Yandel, we got in the offseason again. He's a good, another good guy. Uh, Kevin Hayes is set to come back in a couple games. He's actually been hurt for the season. Um, we're three one and one though. Um, and so I I gotta ask you, what do you think is different this season compared to other seasons that makes it uh makes you think that this Flyers team is headed in a good direction for potentially getting a championship sh- soon. Defense was a big issue for us, and I think we picked up a lot. A, a, a so, like a, I think we picked up like two good defensemen that can like really help the team. Um, in Ellis and um, I'm drawing a blank on the other guy's name. But anyway, we we picked up some defensive a, a, a acquisitions that I think are going to help us a lot. Um, Carter Hart seems to be having a little bit of a better year than last year. Last year he was okay. kind of getting uh. Kind of getting toasted by the media last year. He wasn't. He wasn't <laughs> that great. But that was also, I think, because of the defense a lot. And um, I mean, we, you know, we, we got like a, we got a couple guys. We, we got we still got Coots. We got Couturier. 
We got Drew Konechny, uh, JVR. Now we got Cam Atkinson. Um, Joel Farabee is an absolute stud. He is okay. he is like our guy when it comes down to like scoring goals. He's gonna be a beast in the NHL. Um, we got Oscar Limbaugh Black got uh back. He came back from cancer uh, last year. Um, he's a good player. I think we just got a lot of guys in this team that are like legitimate Sounds stacked. Leg- legitimate talent. It, it's it look you look at our team and you're like, this team's going to the playoffs, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I think we're going to the playoffs. It just it just seems like we're kind of like that almost that Sixers mindset where it's like you know we're going to the playoffs. But you just are, don't know how far we're going to get. But what are we going to go in the playoffs? We have no idea. Um, I think I think for the pod we could probably pick up a little a little Flyers talk once they hit the playoffs, maybe. Yeah, yeah, dude, we got it. We got we to ride the hype. We got to ride, ride the, the hype. hype, dude. I mean, if there's any, if someone's if, if one of these teams are getting through it, and we got to pick <laughs> them up after after the uh, Sixers, yeah. Sixers fiasco and the and the Eagles uh, shit in the bed a little bit. Well, I mean, yeah. hopefully, hopefully once this uh, this Eagles season is done, uh, we can kind of concentrate on you know the draft picks that they're going to get for the draft uh, next next year, and then sort of focus in on the Flyers and the Sixers. It sounds like they're both going to have pretty solid seasons. Yeah, no, I think they will. It's gonna be pretty hype. I think they will. Um, but yeah, it's probably a good spot to end it off. All um, right. It's a little bit of a uh, you know two man pod here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, and let what's up? In in the comments, I want to hear. I want I want you guys. If you guys made it this far, I we weren't joking before. We really want you to give uh, Flay and uh, we want you to give Austin. We want you to give Caputi a little a little roasting. Well, Reston, they uh, <laughs> tell them to get back over here, you know. Come, yeah, tell them, tell them what the what the heck you guys doing? Drop the frisbee and start uh, start potting hop with on, the brothers. Hop, hop on the escape pod, dude. Get back in the ship. <laughs> yeah, <they're>, we 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 need we, yeah. I don't we know. Need the manpower. <laughs> we need the manpower. I I think this. I don't know. If they'll be back, they'll be back. Don't worry. Oh, guys. they'll be back. No, don't worry. <laughs> We're, 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 yeah, we're, next week. We're po- we're next week we'll be back to back to original schedule with the three man, possibly four man pod. So don't worry, you guys. Yep, we'll be back. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this podcast, and um, we'll see you next week with the uh, Detroit game breakdown and uh, some of the Sixers breakdowns. And hopefully, maybe- a little leeway in this Ben Simmons situation. See what goes on there. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, I have some kind of just clarity on what's going on honestly <laughs> yeah. like right now it seems like it's kind of like been a media drought on him after uh-huh. after so much just like talk 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 it's just been like nothing could um, be a good sign could be a bad sign yeah we don't know maybe it is a good sign that we're not talking about him. um all right yeah. you want to land this pod brother all right yeah well, uh eagles uh or philly escape pod episode 20 has launched and, and landed, landed baby Woo! we'll see you guys 20 episodes next. that's a big thing 20 episodes baby We're going strong. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Peace Peace out. Peace out, brothers.